So uh, welcome. I'm going to talk about uh, what I've been experimenting with uh, this last semester, um, trying to get my first year math students to do some project work. Um, so uh, it made me wonder about what it actually means to be innovative because here I'm, I'm doing something that actually doesn't feel terribly brand new. Um, I've done some reading, many universities um, that teach engineering students do a lot of problem-based learning, which um, is beyond what I'm doing. Um, but I've come to a, an understanding, I feel, of innovative, which means uh, uncomfortable. So I, I feel this is innovative because I feel uncomfortable doing it. And it started um, with a course that I took on transforming tutorials. This is really not working. So, Try it lower down. I don't know if that's coming through on the mic. Yep, okay. I think too much necklace interference. Okay, and um, this uh, tutorial course got me really questioning what we really want our students to know after first semester maths. Um, it's quite a dry course. Uh, the exciting applications really you can only do at the end of your second semester in maths. So um, there's the necessary groundwork that needs to be put in place in the first semester really for the maths to stand as a, as a whole. Um, but it got me thinking really when we pass a student, there's a sort of sense you have that you know this student really hasn't got it. And so I started to question what is the it? You know, our, our course outline says they need to do these things, but you know when you interact with students whether or not they can fake it. Um, and uh, so the, I, I thought doing something that will take us slightly beyond um, what is the, the course description of what we want them to know and what are the unwritten qualities that we're hoping them um, to gain through this pr process <coughs> of, of taking first year maths. <clears throat> Excuse me. In this uh, tutorials course that I did, uh, there was this conceptual framework of um, how you can think about designing your teaching and learning experience um, from the perspective of students or tutors or the lecturer, uh, called No Be Do. Um, it got me thinking about our students are wanting to become engineers and how we could try and make use of that a little bit more than we do. My background is not in engineering. Um, I, I've taught maths um, in a maths department and now at UTT in the aspect program which is a academic support program for students in engineering. But I don't know what it's like to be an engineer myself. So this is also a, a bit of a limitation for um, me trying to get my students into a profession which I have no experience of being. Um, I also have a sense that uh, literature shows in teaching and learning what is really highly aligned to um, better performance by students and better experiences is that they're actively engaged in what they're doing. And I think all first year students need to develop the ability to work with their peers and they need to be able to do that in every first year course. Um, so I thought, well, I should be doing more of that. <clears throat> so here are a few reasons why I feel we should be doing project work. One is that if you don't know wolframalpha.com, it will probably change your life. Uh, I'm assuming you're here because you have some interest in math. Or you know someone who is. Um, it, it can do everything that we really want our students to be able to do according to our our um, list of content they need to know, our course outline. <clears throat> and so I need to have something that I'm getting my students to do that I, I feel this will actually be something worthwhile in the future when as an engineer, if they want to do any of these skills that we're trying to teach them, uh, and you know they've got Wolfram Alpha to do that, what else is it that they're taking from this course that's going to impact their lives? Um, YouTube is the way that people learn. So um, by having students make presentations, my idea was to make them um, make a video presentation of the work that they were doing in their project. And this is a means of communication that I feel needs to be developed. 
Um, I asked students what they did over the, the short vacation. One said, he fixed his phone. I said, how did you learn how to do that? Oh, I watched a YouTube video. It's just people learn a lot through videos. Khan Academy for Maths is you know, the role model um, and, and quite wonderful. But uh, when you have to explain work to others, it gets you to understand it in a way that is deeper than if you just have to read it and, and keep it internalized. The students that I was teaching are students who failed in their first semester. Um, and although they are very talented students, they've had a hiccup and I felt their self-esteem might be um, needing a bit of a boost as they start this repeat course. Also, for many of them, they might be questioning if they are in the right field, if they've chosen the right degree. And so by trying to um, do some project work in the field of engineering, I was hoping to try and inspire some passion. Uh, and of course, it's a growing thing now that people are encouraged to do interdisciplinary collaboration. So this is good news for me because I'm not an engineer. So I'm hoping that some of that's going to come along. And so why is it hard to do? It takes a lot of time if you want to get your students to make presentations and share them in class. It takes a lot of time if you're going to mark presentations as a lecturer. I have a very tiny class, so I could experiment with this without that constraint um, overwhelming me. But um, if you're going to scale this up to our first year class of 500, there are different ways that you would have to address this. Um, one thing would be to get students to present to other students in groups, to peer mark. Um, you could have in class a demonstration of some samples, this is how you would mark them, and pass that over to the students. Um, yes, there could be students who um, feel they are unfairly graded by their peers and not getting a very good um, deal out of having, not having the lecturer giving them personal attention, but I think uh, it, it would work. The other constraint is that if you're trying to teach a very content-heavy course, you don't have a lot of time to give up to allow students to go and explore um, something that is not in this very tightly packed syllabus. If you, you're going to give up two or three lectures to, you know, even one lecture to do a presentation, something that's a bit unusual, it's, it's going to be a problem. <clears throat> There's no doubt that for some students, uh, like the dancing students this morning, um, being performing is something that comes more easily to them. There are students who are terribly shy about present presenting, and for some students, um, speaking in English is less comfortable. So, uh, unfortunately, it's not an even playing ground, but I think all the students would be benefit well, would benefit from having to speak, having to go through the scary ordeal of having to give a presentation. <clears throat> Excuse me. And then for some lecturers, um, it's easier if you've got the experience and the knowledge. Um, and my favorite, well, uh, it's certainly very easy if you've got some uh, engineering, thank you, some engineering knowledge and you're trying to set engineering projects. All right. That said, there are lots of resources where calculus projects have been done. Um, sadly, not too many that really apply to uh, my first year engineering course. But I set, the project, the, I set two projects for the students this semester as a first trial. The first one I got from our very own textbook. Um, I discovered it has interleaved in it um, little project play pages where um, it sounds very um, glamorous that you're doing a roller coaster project. They're all very um, real life and, and all really have some relevance to engineering. But it seems a lot of um, uh, sort of frills. It's, it's really when you get down to it, there's maths. There's maths dressed up with a picture and a head in that makes it look exciting. Um, but really, I think that's what it is at this stage of this kind of course. If, if you can actually just have more of these links that inspire students. So yes, it actually is a heavy project. One of the students, when he presented, said, the first thing I want to say is, don't just look at the heading and choose your topic, because th there were five they could choose from. And he thought a rainbow project would be very easy, and it turned out really to be fairly hard. But um, yeah, the first project was, was set for them in the book, questions, very mathematical. The second project, I decided 
It was at the end of the course the students could choose um, a realistic scenario that would appear in their branch of engineering. So for example, if they're a civil engineer, something that could likely happen in their career as a civil engineer that they could make um, two problems in maths from, from what we've been studying, a, a related rates problem and an optimization problem within the scenario. They should choose a scenario that interests them. If they don't have a scenario, they need to speak to someone who is in that field. They need to read up about it and try and find some, something in the field that interests them. Um, I thought this shouldn't be too hard to do, but it seems that many students make their selection for which branch of engineering to go into almost um, randomly, according to what they think they'll most get into, rather than because of their passion. Um, and then I was quite inspired by um, this journal article, which um, spoke about using projects um, to develop it, um, expertise. Two points about that that struck me most. One is that especially if you want students to transfer their knowledge, it works better if you are teaching, if they have general principles. If they've wrote, learned things, the transfer is not going to happen. The tension we have in a maths course is developing those skills um, when we feel that there's a lot of development of just the simple skills that's needed um, before we can move off into the place where they can transfer them. Um, but I'm, I'm getting the sense that if we are are not um, giving them more of a link between you need to understand these principles, um, here are all the small bits, but every now and then showing them the bigger picture and, and, and maybe helping them to do that link, then we're not um, working too well. And motivation is found to be key to getting students to do more work. Um, I was very delighted to hear that because that's what I like to play with. All right, so practice, um, two little parts about that, to develop component skills and um, to integrate the skills. These are two different things that need practicing. Um, and these lovely little quotes, to acquire com component skills does not by itself prepare students to perform complex tasks. And integration is not an automatic process. Um, these really make me feel more project work works. Oh dear. Oh, there we go. He has a quick snippet um, of a project. I'm afraid it looks terribly blurry from here. And it's not playing. Play. Quick time out available, that would be why. All right, well, imagine this is a video. The students, um, they, they just made very simple videos. They had handwritten notes, they had a cell phone, they just made them by themselves and they submitted them. Um, so this is something that can easily be done in, in groups getting them to share. I say easily, um, I, what I mean is if you can manage to actually share them, it's actually very hard. I'm going to beg Silt for some help. Uh, but we do manage. I have got some. Um, I'll just tell you that this one was about a reservoir, civil engineering student, um, where there was, a, you know, a, how, uh, talked about the flow rate and, um, well, various things. Okay, I think it's your turn to ask questions, if you have any. Thank you, Thank you very much, Anita. Um, are there, we've got a, literally about a minute and a half for any questions. You can direct them to, to Anita directly. Yes. So, how many students are you talking about? Oh, don't ask that. <laughs> the question is how many students? He's asking because he has a class of 500. I have a class of less than 20. Yeah, it's cushy, I know, sorry. Um, it's my, in fact, my comfort zone has been in big classes. It's actually, if it makes you feel any better, it's, it's been a challenge for me to adapt to have to learn how to deal with small classes because when you have small classes, you just, you can do and therefore you should do the things that are really hard to do in, in big classes. So, when I've got this all smoothly perfected, I'll come to you with a plan for the big class. We used to have help. Oh, really? Yeah, so okay. I'll, I'll take it off Okay, thank you. <laughs> I'll come and learn from you. <laughs>